Wow. The garage. <laughs> Here we're Morton and, yeah. and the rest of the Love Tap team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, so the... that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what, so tell me a little bit about it. Cause I never, for me being from America, I've never seen one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah buddy. It's a Mercedes M, uh, M104 engine inside of a Mercedes CLK from 2003. It's not the original engine from this car, but uh, we converted it to left-hand drive because we bought it in England. And we put this engine in with the NASCAR gearbox and uh, yeah, like everything is modified. <laughs> Was it hard finding the NASCAR gearbox and everything? Yeah, we, we bought a NASCAR gearbox but we did a custom bell house to fit the engine because wow. it's not available otherwise. But it's been a lot of work but uh, it's definitely worth it in the long run. But. A lot of custom fab and stuff like that. Yeah. You guys do it all in-house or? Yeah, like we have a lot of friends who do certain stuff. I, I kind of plan out the solutions and then people help me to weld and yeah, stuff that hey. I can't do myself. I can't do anything, everything myself. So. Well, you just have the V6 in it, right? Uh, no, Are... this was the, the, the diesel from the beginning. Oh, wow. So this was a, <laughs> a, a even, 9.5 from wow. the beginning. I see the big Borg wearing a turbo on there. Yeah. <laughs> Decent size. <laughs> it's crazy that you guys are able to get Cosmos wheels over here too, because yeah. they're pretty popular where we're from. Yeah, very common there. Yeah, you know, it's funny, the first time I, I saw your guys, um, like, just knew about your team was just uh, Need for Speed 2015, because you yeah. guys had, had a sticker in there. And I, you know, I didn't kind of realize, uh, like, everything, you know, Ghost Games was here and stuff like that. Yeah. Was it, did they approach you guys to, to just... Uh... I had a friend who worked there, actually. Wow. And then, uh, he introduced those guys to what we were doing, and uh, yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah. Was it easy getting this thing to, to be drift ready, basically, or? No, <laughs> it's not easy. Like, uh, uh, yeah, it's so much stuff that it's hard to understand, really, but... I like the, I like the iPad in there. Yeah, we have all the, we have all the dash... Uh, info in on that. Wow. Yeah, from the EC. That's crazy. This is the first time I've seen a build of like this scale and especially on a platform like this, you know, most of, for us, especially in Florida and stuff like that, most of the Mercedes, they started to get into like stamps and stuff yeah. like that, but you know, to really see like a kitted out drift car. The only other time I saw one was, um, I think she competed in the, um, the European Drift Series was uh, Karina from uh, 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 Hyperdrive, yeah. yeah. And that was like my first like taste of drift Mercedes, and I was like, "Whoa, that's cool that you guys." Yeah, a few more now. Yeah, and of course we have Black Smoke Racing with the diesel, and also uh, the Kanpa in Drift Masters has a 2JC uh, E-Top. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's how it looks when it's on. Ah, that is sick. Man, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing original is in here. It's, other than maybe the dashboard. It's what? C2. Ah. It's a Norwegian company who makes that. So it's a, um, it's a box that connects uh, via canvas to your ECU. Uh -huh. And then you have a Bluetooth connector in that, which then is translated over to the iPad. That's amazing. Is it plug and play or is it? Yeah, it's, but as soon as you get the canvas right, it works everything. It's so amazing. It's a good system. So how was it like competing over here? Because it's... Yeah, it's a bit different here, I guess, uh, to, uh, compared to America. Yeah. Or we do uh, probably more low speed drifting, like more technical stuff here. We have some fast tracks as, uh, as well, but uh, mainly it's more like uh, arena drifts. Yeah. It's like tighter tracks and a lot of that stuff has been in the last few years. But uh, yeah, probably so, going to be more high speed this year. Nice, nice. That'd be cool to see this thing like stretch its legs. Yeah. That's awesome. Your videos. I'm like, I, I see you like, you know, when you drive and stuff like that. That like this car has so much more, you know, like that it wants to let out. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I fun. see you almost like braking to like hit, like let the other drivers like, you know, <laughs> give some space. So. Yeah, it depends on which cars you're <laughs> running against. So, yeah. Of course, also like if you're chasing a car that's on three tires and you're on semi slicks, it's way easier to keep up. Of course, so it, there's a bit of that as well. But uh, that's a lot of grip, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> And so for um, tires, what do you normally run? Uh, oh wow, that's cool you guys are able to get it over here. Yeah. Uh, so then we have the fuel system. Oh my uh, gosh. And it's, oh, I see a uh, radiator in the rear too. Yeah. So it's uh, like the, the body is cut here. Mm. So everything this is plastic. No way. You can wow. See the, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
It's not, it doesn't look that good in close up, but it looks good in uh, it, as a, it, a track. It, it looks good, exactly. From it, it's a good, it's a good uh, ten foot. You say it's <laughs> but far, it still looks nice in person. Far from good, but good from far. Yes, yeah, far <laughs> from good, but good from far. Yeah. So the rest is is tubed in the in the rear. Yeah. So if you check in the, it, there's a hole there. The oh my gosh. Oh yeah. There you guys go. Wow, that's really neat. Drifters over in uh, in Lisa, Florida and stuff like that. We also started to switch over to the rear mounted yeah. cooling setup. Yeah, thing. it's way better because you don't uh, crash it as much and also <laughs> you move a lot of weight to the rear axle, which you can have uh, advantage with the rear, rear and stuff like that. So also getting a lot more fluid, which takes which makes the system take longer to heat up because we have all, all the uh, short burst of. Heat coming in after because the tires are not lasting that long, so uh -huh. it's, a, it's a way of like getting some more efficiency in the system. I would say it's a little cold right now, but like does normally like the temperatures warm up? It's not like Florida because I think you have <laughs> yeah. a lot of more humidity than we do. Oh yeah. So, uh, I guess we have uh, we're about 35 degrees. I don't know what that's in Fahrenheit, but uh, it's like 95. Oh okay. Yeah, True. so that's yeah. like yeah. Heat summer. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we're around 85. Okay, that's not too bad. So some, yeah. you guys pretty much get it like, like we do, yeah, but, but not as much humidity. Yeah, we have a shorter period. We have like maybe three months tops, wow. and then it goes down. <laughs> the biggest difference between here and Florida, for instance, is that we have a really long off season. Mm -hmm. So that's why the cars are pretty much overdeveloped, because we, we yeah. have a lot of time in the sheds. Uh, I see. To the cars, but we, people, People don't get that much seat time uh, because people overbuild and stuff like that. I mean, is there some people that like, you know, I know some people like street drift and things like that here, um, but like, is that very common or, you know, people... No, it's not, it's not that common, but it, it, it definitely exists. But then it's more like, maybe not the, the extreme side of it. It's more like the everyday tuner car that's more... <laughs> Just kick it out on the street yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not a huge uh, street scene, but there's a few maybe... I know about 10, 15 guys that do it on a regular basis, but they're spread out all over the country. So. Yeah, not secret guys. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing about like the you know european drifting and stuff like that like you guys go a lot more i feel like you guys go a lot more harder than than even we do like you know obviously formula drift is like for us that's like the the peak for yeah, us yeah, yeah. but like you guys are almost like you know from starter level it's like like for you guys are at like formula yeah, drift. it's like a, the horsepower hysteria it's big here yeah, yeah. if you're at gotville and you don't have 600 horsepower plus you're like really low horsepower yeah like 800 is almost uh, the norm <laughs> like so seven eight hundred is so like i'm assuming this is this is enough it's uh, 850 at the wheel Woo. yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, i'm not uh, that's nothing extreme in the in this drift scene it's more like if you have a high power car it's 1000 plus wow yeah, and that's really crazy high. like pro pro is usually like that like you know 800 900 yeah. over there you know i but think there's like the difference in sweden is there's a, a bunch of guys that are really only amateurs just doing it for fun and they still have uh, the same power wow <laughs> as i told you like the cars are really overbuilt yeah the people don't focus that much on seat time the more like the process of building the cars and stuff like that. So you guys trailer it out to the to the uh, local tracks and stuff like that yeah. when it's time. We don't have that many tracks that's really close by. We yeah. have uh, one or two that's maybe one hour to two hours away. Otherwise, it's more like a four-hour trip. Wow. Most tracks. Yeah, yeah I, I saw. We were just gonna go see Stockholm, and I didn't realize that's like a three-hour, yeah, like five-hour, five hour, right? Yeah. yeah. Three hours it's on train, I think it's like three hours, just because you're skipping traffic. But that's that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the sad part. It's a fast train. You feel the weight. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Dang. So you guys really just like stripped everything out. Yeah, this is a yeah, glass fiber or a fiberglass. Yeah. Wow. I love you. I love your guys' stickers. Yeah, yeah. they're everywhere. Yeah. Like this is from all the teams that we meet on our own events. Oh, shoot, sure, okay. To collect them inside the doors. But, and I got stickers, so I'll give you guys, I'll leave you guys with some stickers as well. Yeah, yeah.
dang, that's awesome, man. But, you know, thank you for, you know, I know it's kind of, it was on short notice, but thank you for yeah, yeah. giving us a quick rundown. It's, it's the same for me. Like, if I go outside, I always try to meet up with people that like minded and stuff. Like. It's, cool to see a, it's cool to see a friendly face, you know? Yeah. It's a very different caliber of drifting here. Yeah. Is it, I was going to say, is it hard finding, like, parts, like, sourcing parts to Sweden, or? For this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, like, parts in general, yeah. Yeah, but no, uh, no. Like, if you have a regular car, like the Mazda. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the RX-7. Mostly you can find parts, but, of course, there is some special parts because it's rotary and stuff like that, so it's hard to come by. Uh -huh. but, like, all the tuning parts in America is probably easy to get here as well, but you have to pay more because of the customs and shipping. Yeah. And stuff like that. So That's what I was imagining too, because I'm like, yeah, no, it must be like pricey to bring it over here. Yeah, um, some stuff is really expensive to get over, for sure. Do people drift Volvos here? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Car wheel that's coming up. Whoa, so okay. A Corolla uh, K70. Okay. So it has decent fitment. <laughs> okay, look at that fitment goals. Dang. I'm about to put a credit card in there. <laughs> Did a little credit card swipe. Yeah, so that, this is gonna be like I have a YouTube series about this one. That's gonna be a uh, like my street car, the K K24 Swap on that 2000 gearbox, and uh, yeah, we're gonna go NA with this one. Nice, that's gonna be uh, sick. The goal is 900 kilos and uh, 300 wheel horsepower. Oh. So that's the end goal. So wow. Should be able to do it, but we'll see how far I get and uh, how much I <laughs> curse on the way. But, yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's crazy that you're able to like push 300 out of you know just an NA like yeah, NA yeah. motor. But I've seen a lot of people do it in, definitely in the states as well. So high compression and uh, do uh, maybe do uh, four piston racing uh, cylinder head and stuff like that. So an ITV is an E85, so we should be. Getting close at least. I see you guys have a lot of E85 here. Like yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, yeah cause big yeah, for us like it's like we have to have the app and you know hunt for it and all that. It, Actually, it, run the gas station E85 in that one. I run it on the regular E85 from the gas station. Wow, yeah. wow, that is that's quite impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that, and that's my friends. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask you about the the rotary because it's, it's cool. It is, it's, uh, Richard, he's called Ichi Richie on uh, Instagram. Okay, okay, we'll put we'll put the tag in. And uh, so this is his uh, FD. It's a uh, 30B. Uh, it was uh, I think it was a. I don't know if it's a bridge port, but he got a done engine from America and imported that stuff. So it's around. I think he had like 399 wheel, if <laughs> I remember correctly. Wow! At least he kept the rotary. Like, yeah, so this is the best sounding car. Like every yeah. time he starts it, you have to listen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, no. yeah. Yeah. That that was the dream for the K70, but uh, unfortunately, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah. Took the easy way. <laughs> Oh yeah, because a lot of people they do the rotary swaps on those. Yeah, because especially especially down there in Florida, we yeah, but, uh, uh, rotary community is huge. Yeah, for like I want to do big road trips and stuff with that, so I want to take something a little bit more reliable. Yeah, and easier to find parts. So. You guys have a lot of country sides, so you don't want to get stranded on this. Yeah, I want to go to Europe as well. So. Wow, that's gonna be cool. Somebody, yeah, some problem with the drivetrain. So. No. He's rebuilt the rear axle now to a Mustang differential. Sure, wow. And uh, he's changing to an RX-8 gearbox as well. So Holy he's, heck. He's, he's keeping busy, but uh, he needs to do it because like, when you're closing up to the power he has, it starts to happen stuff with the drive so. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy how resourceful you guys are about like parts, because even for us, like, you know, most of our parts we're able to get like specifically for our cars, like, you know, we don't have to, uh, like, that's cool that you guys are like, literally putting a Mustang around on that. Yeah, <laughs> but then like that, that's the whole idea, well, like, not idea, but that's the whole thing about the CLK, like, the bad rear axle is a, a Mercedes subframe mm -hmm. with a BMW E34 diff, with oh. the uh, custom sh uh, drive shaft, and then I have like the stock knuckles, but I have a BMW hub in it. What? That's yeah, crazy. So you can okay. Have the floating uh, drive shaft. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have the NASCAR gearbox, and then we have like everything is. Yeah. Yeah, everything is. Everything <laughs> is like parts from the either. Side we call it Frankenstein. Yeah, it's a really, it's a really it's a Frankenstein car. Sure. Yeah. But, uh, it takes time, but it's fun. Oh yeah. I noticed it was a wagon, by the way. That's. Oh. Yeah, you got it. the best model, man. <laughs> yeah, I love the wagons. It's really hard to come by. Yeah. It's a really good chassis. Actually, it's not much rust. 
The only rust is like the bad rust is the rear fender arches. Uh -huh. They're really eaten up, but otherwise, like even the doors and everything is uh, really in good condition. So. You guys uh, found it here in Sweden? Yeah, I bought it like 2012. Wow. I drove it for a couple of years. Uh, got tired of the stock engine and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, one year I decided to rip the engine out to get started, but uh, <laughs> this car. It takes all my money and time, so it's really yeah. hard to focus on anything else. So. Yeah, if I felt that. <laughs> yeah. Everything takes time. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to collect parts for it, so when it's time to build it, it's not going to be like waiting for money and all of that stuff. We're trying to collect as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, and it's, it's nice to just be able to do the building, just go straight forward on and not yeah, have to like, yeah. wait. Yeah, not have to wait everything. Yeah. And that's the hard part about doing the builds. Yeah, well, thank you again. You know, I'm pretty much gonna end it off from here for the video, but it was, you know, after this, I'm gonna just be taking pictures and talking with the guys and say what's up. But, you know, I'm again, guys, it's been really cool here in Sweden, and we'll try to shoot some more content and see what's going on. Peace, guys. <laughs>